Welcome back. In our previous lesson, we focused on finding and eliminating errors in data to improve data quality. Sometimes, when we're reporting on something for regulatory purposes, or if we're working on data that needs to be standardized across institutions, we very often need to map data. Data mapping is what we'll address in this lesson. After this lesson, you'll be able to define data mapping, describe when data mapping becomes necessary, list several places where we map data between systems, and explain why you might need to remap data over the course of time. Let's get started. According to the HEMA body of knowledge, one essential component of IT healthcare interoperability is the improved care and efficiency it offers, is data mapping. Data mapping involves matching between a source and a target, such as between two databases that contain the same data elements but call them by different names. This matching enables software and systems to meaningfully exchange patient information, reimbursements, outcomes reports, and other data. Let's look at a simple example. I'm going to show you data from two systems, one from our electronic health record and the other one from our clinical trials management system. Our electronic health record is what we use for providing care to patients who are in the hospital and in our clinics. The clinical trial system uses some of the same data, but takes that data and puts it into a clinical trial system. That lets us do clinical trials on drugs or on procedures and then report to groups like the Federal Drug Administration. This might be done to see if a drug gets approved or get information or work that we're doing published. Suppose we need to map data addressing the same reality, in this case a person's ethnicity, but drawing from two different databases. In this case, ethnicity of a person does not change, but each database calls them by different names or fits it into different categories. Look at the two columns on the left side of this table. The column on the left is the categories for ethnicity in the electronic health record. The second column, entitled clinical trials ethnicity, relates to a person's ethnicity, but with far fewer categories. When we map the EHR ethnicity data to the clinical trials system data, we see what is actually one of the government standards. I believe that in this mapping for ethnicity, legislative mandate requires reporting on people that are Hispanic or Latino, non-Hispanic, and not reporting an unknown. Now, the thing to think about here is that you're collecting data at the more granular level. It's possible to map that data to the less granular level, but not possible to go the other way. For instance, you could say that the Vietnamese is non-Hispanic, but you could not say that the non-Hispanic is Vietnamese. There are other places where it's also difficult to do mappings. If you look at things that are places where pieces like other and unknown and missing they are all sort of bring you to the place where it's just a decline to state. They all basically say that you don't have the information. All would wind up mapping to unknown. Similarly, there are other places where you can look at other mappings. In the next set of columns, we have our race mappings. The electronic health record has 25, and our clinical trial system has 28. Some of them are very similar and can be mapped directly. Other places, where we map data are coding systems. Sometimes we map between drugs and drug classes. If we're interested in something that would be categorized as a heart drug, we can summarize all of the heart drugs into a category of heart drugs and map them into that category. There are places where that mapping is useful, particularly if you're doing an analysis on patients and you want to know if they're being treated for heart disease. You might look for a heart drug. And in order to do that, you need a good mapping of all the drugs that they might be on, which could be captured in the electronic health record to the particulars of the heart drugs. One of the issues you can see in this is that drugs often have more than one indication. And although a drug may be originally created for one purpose, like the heart, 
it's often found that you can use it for another purpose. The problem that you can run into is one of misattribution. If you assume that someone's receiving a drug for heart disease, but they're getting the drug for another ailment, that would be a case of misattribution. Another issue that we run into are that sometimes requirements for data change over time. At UC Davis, one of the things we've seen over the years is that the way we track race and ethnicity have evolved. If you go back to the data we collected 10 years ago, you would see a different list of ethnicities in our electronic health record than we see today. Some of these categories fit together and have merged. Some of them go to more detail than they did in the past. Knowing that the data has changed over time makes a big difference and must be considered when mapping or otherwise working with data. Other places we see in the categorization of different kinds of healthcare facilities. There are hospitals and there are clinics. Very often, we move clinics, we reorganize departments, we split things up that used to be in one clinic into two clinics. And as we look at data collected over the course of time, we need to know where those changes happen and remap the data accordingly. Sometimes in a data warehouse, these are called slowly changing dimensions, or type two dimensions. In such situations, we need to know when this has happened. We need to be aware that it has happened, and we need to modify our data sets as we do our analyses to make sure we're properly accounting for those changes that occurred at specific points of time. This concludes our brief look at data mapping. After this lesson, you should be able to define data mapping, describe when data mapping becomes necessary, list several places where we map data between systems, and explain why you might need to remap data over the course of time. If you have worked in or studied data analytics, this would not be a new concept for you. I hope I've helped you see where and how data mapping works in healthcare. Thanks for your attention.